This is Ritesh Srinivasan and welcome to my channel. In this video, let's look at custom data sets and data loaders in the PyTorch framework. So the code for processing data samples can get messy and hard to maintain. So we need to ideally, uh, you know, decouple our data set code and model training code for better readability and modularity. So this is where PyTorch provides two data primitives, torch utils dot data dot data loader and torch utils dot data dot data set which allows you to use preloaded data sets as well as your own data okay so there are examples of preloaded data set over here how to load but what about custom data sets okay so for custom data sets also they've explained how to do it over here so i what i will do in this video is that with two examples i'll show you how you can create your own custom data set uh, classes and data loaders to load your data okay so the first problem is a paddy classification problem paddy disease classification problem in kaggle okay so if you go to the data over here so the data looks like this you have train images where you have lots of images under certain classes so the task over here is to actually identify the diseases so images of a particular disease of paddy is actually put into these respective folders so for example there are 479 uh, images under this category okay so this is your train images and there is a folder for test images okay where you have test images right and you have train.csv now let's look at how train.csv looks like so what i've done is i've imported a lot of libraries because this is an image classification problem but our focus today is about data set and data loader okay so for that i import from torch vision data sets okay um, so what happens over here is that uh, once you look at the uh, your training data it looks like this there is an image id and there is a label okay now where, where is this image present this image is present within the train images and this image is bacteria leaf blade so it will be within this particular folder okay so now if you visualize the images this is how it looks like so what i've done is that i've picked four images for each of these 10 classes and i have just visualized it over here okay so we have read the train data basically we have done pd.read csv and the train data looks like this okay so now we need to create a data set okay so before this what i do is that i convert the labels to integers okay and i get a label to id dictionary over here huh? then what i do is that these are some configurations not important i do a train test split over here okay on the train da uh, data frame uh, say point 0.2 uh, so i do a train tra uh, sample i just pick 40 percent of the samples in the training data and then i do a train test split over here and i get my train and validation data frames okay so now we are defining our custom data set so how do we define a custom data set so it actually is uh, basically it is a derived class from the data set class okay and what i do over here is that in the constructor i pass the data frame our train data frame or validation data frame okay i pass the root directory which is this particular directory where the train images are present then i also have a is train because if i'm creating a validation data frame then i will not perform certain transforms on the images then there is a transform method okay these are transforms which are performed on the image then i can declare a length method to get the length of the data frame so this is the number of samples present in the data frame okay then what i do is that uh, i have to get the you know your uh, uh, index basically right from this uh, you know data frame and we need a get item method which will return an image and a label for us okay so now how do we get the image over here what i do over here is that for the image i join the path of the root directory okay and in our uh, data frame in our training data frame if you look at uh, very specifically over here your first column is your uh, you know uh, your first column uh, index column one is your label and index column zero is your image id so to get the path of the image what i do is that i join the basically the uh, uh, you know the class okay that is at index one and then the image file name okay so i join and i get the complete path of the image okay for example uh, 
path like this over here okay get the complete path train images this particular flow and this this thing and then i use opencv to read the image i convert it to pill and for the label right i what i do is that i read the first column which is the label and what i do is that uh, i will convert it into a uh, using this label to id i'll convert it into an integer and then i'll make a tensor and that is how i will return the uh, you know image and label okay i also do some transforms if there is a transform method i do some transforms on the image so this is my custom data set class okay what does this custom data set class do mainly it has a get item method which will return an image and a label for further training okay so what do i do next over here i do some transforms on the image over here i will make a separate video explaining these transforms and here i am instantiating my data sets now okay so for instantiating the data set i create an object of this particular class paddy data set where i pass the train data frame okay and the root directory i pass the root directory of the train images and this is train and i do certain validations okay for on the training images similarly i create a, a data set for the validation data over here where i am passing the valid data frame and then i am passing the root directory again the transforms okay so now my data sets are created over here so from the data sets i can use data loader where i can specify a batch size number of workers to work on uh, retrieving this uh, data and uh, similarly i do for a validation loader over here so these are data loaders okay so now i can iterate through this data loader like this so when i am iterating the data loader over here uh, you know it kind of returns one batch at a time so if you see i am printing the train features over here it uh, so my batch size is defined as 256 so it is giving me a batch of images where each image is of this form it's a three channel image 224 into 224 size right and i can visualize one of the image and the label over here like this okay so using this custom data set class i can create my data loaders i can create my data sets and data loaders and i can also iterate through them so these data loaders uh, are then used in your model training at a later stage okay so this is one example of a custom data set a creation of a custom data set the key things over here is the get item method where you will get the image path and you will also read the image okay now let's look at another example okay where we have images in a slightly different way okay here the images are organized like this if you look at train images it just has all the images right and test also has all images and here if you look at the uh, your training um, pandas data frame or training data frame it looks something like this okay so here it looks like you know there is an image and there is a type okay again a class label to this image okay but in the previous case this image was stored under a folder of this type right if you look over here it was stored under a folder of that particular uh, label right here it is not like that it is just stored under one particular folder okay under one root folder so here what we'll do is that i have just visualized this data i will not go too much into details of that but let's go to the data set class and see what are the key differences over here you know what are the minor differences over here in terms of uh, the data set uh, class right so here what i do is that i also have an image pre-processing method okay to do some uh, kind of histogram equalization on these images i'll not go into detail of this but let's look at the data set so here i uh, this is a sorghum uh, uh, data set so i have named it as sorghum data set again it uh, is an uh, derived class from data set right so here what i do is it again i pass the data frame i pass the root directory i pass uh, transform methods and this thing so here if you look to the get item method this is the only change which i have done over here what i do is that i pass the uh, your uh, root directory and i also pass the file name here i don't have a class of label under these there are no folders of label so i need not pass it i just pass this and get the image path okay then i read the image path but here i have introduced a pre-processing method over here on the image so you can also introduce pre-processing methods over here within the data set class so this is a pre-processing method on the image which i have introduced over here again the label i use this label to id which i have done uh, previously i kind of identify the labels and convert it into one hot encoding 
so i use that over here and then uh, you know what i do is that i get the label over here from again from the data uh, frame at uh, location 1 whereas the basically the second column the first column has your uh, image path okay or image uh, file name okay so in this way i create data sets over here so this is a slight difference from the previous one but i hope you get the idea of how depending upon your images are stored you can actually change the data set custom data set class okay because ultimately for training what we need we need the image and we need the label okay so that is what is after transformation that is what is returned over here in the get item method again over here i have some transforms and i am creating my train data set over here by passing the root directory and other parameters and if i were to visualize the uh, this thing here my batch size is 64 so you can see that uh, 64 is the batch size and each image is of you know three channels uh, 224 cross 224 and uh, the labels is again uh, again 64 size so if you can look at one image it looks like this this is the image and this is the label okay so uh, so i have created the data loaders and uh, basically the train loader and val loader okay this is just thing nothing but creating iterators over your data sets okay that is your data loaders okay so now we have covered uh, you know custom data set now let us look at how do we create a data set for the test images right because there are no folders over here so this is very simple um so what i have done over here is that uh, if i go to the data set over here again i am passing the test data frame so i create one uh, data frame over here with the list of all the images under this folder okay i create a simple data frame and uh, i pass the data frame the root directory which is test images any transform which needs to be done over here and here if you look at the get item method what i do is that i join just the root directory and the uh, image uh, file name okay that is how i get the entire file path i read the image i also load the tensor over here uh, here the tensor is nothing but uh, dummy value over here dummy label over here okay that is what i create over here here also similar case because test has just images so here also i have created a data set like that for your testing and from that data set see here if you look at it i have done the similar thing over here except that there is this uh, image pre processing method which i have done over here the rest of the things are same and here also what i do is that i create a test loader to iterate through the test images here also i create a test loader to iterate through the test images okay so this is how you can actually create your custom data sets and uh, your data loaders in pytorch i hope this video on custom data sets would be useful for you if you like the video please like share subscribe to the channel see you in another video i have more videos coming up on pytorch stay tuned to the channel happy learning